My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as well as uh, you guys as angel of this house, Pastor Liz, I definitely appreciate the opportunity. Um, without further ado, can we bow our heads for one second just to give some glory to God? Father God, I thank you for bringing us here today. I thank you for every opportunity, every day that you breathe into us. Thank you for always giving us the gift of life. And with that gift, I pray that we can always do something every single day to add to your kingdom. Find a way to add value to you in your mission, Father God. I pray that we can utilize the gifts that you bless us with in order to bless your kingdom. Thank you for this opportunity, and I pray that you can work through me so that somebody can get a message from you. In your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 tend to try to pull some of the stuff I talk about from the Bible. So the Bible verse for the day, I'm not sure if you guys have a Bible. I use my phone. Uh, technology is a beautiful thing. Amen. Um, Isaiah 43. If you guys could turn with me to Isaiah 43. We're going to focus on chapters 18 and 19. Isaiah 43, chapters 18 and 19. I, uh, I kind of like when people talk back to me, so whenever you guys find it, just how the word. Just how the word. Preach like that. Yeah, I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> So as soon as you guys find the hollow word, once I get some words, I'll move on. Isaiah 43, chapter, chapter 43, verses 18 and 19. Amen. Amen. And the Bible reads, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now shall it spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you could do me a favor and turn to your neighbor to your left and your right and give them my sermon title, Changing the Narrative. Changing the Narrative. That, that, was, the wrong, that was the wrong name. Turn to the other neighbor and tell them, Changing the Narrative. Changing the Narrative. And I think everybody can agree it's time to do that. And so if I ask, what is a narrative? Oftentimes people get confused. Um, the best, the easiest way for me to explain a narrative is a stereotype about an event, a bias that we all have. Obviously, I'm a cute black man. When people see me, they think, oh, he probably is an athlete. Maybe uh, he's more likely to go to jail. Maybe he's probably going to make less. But either way, there's a narrative for that. And look no further than right here in the Bible verse where God says he'll make a way in the wilderness. The narrative about the wilderness is that's when people go to get lost. People die in the wilderness, and he'll make a way. He's going to change the narrative. He'll make a river in the desert. The narrative about the desert is it's dead, it's dry. And he'll make a river. He's going to change the narrative. And the narrative about New York City, the desolate, the death, the destruction. I'm here to tell you today, God is going to change that narrative. So I knew I wanted to speak about changing the narrative. I didn't exactly know exactly how I wanted to tackle that until Wednesday shooting. Um, I have a nonprofit mentoring young men here in the city, 7 to 17, and some of the young men that I mentor knew that uh, young man that lost his life, and they were affected by it and asked me for my advice. And the only thing I can tell them is, my little bros, it's time to change the narrative. And they asked, what does that mean? You might not get it. And I said, little do you know, you lost one person, but if I told you how many people I lost, I need 10 more fingers and 10 more toes. Right from Woody to Mar to Sha to Drac to Lodge to Chicken to Crud to my own brother Willie, I've lost people too. But the difference is, I had to take that lesson and learn it and apply it in order to change my own narrative. And I'm not saying that it's easy, but after being in the streets and going to jail and going to jail myself, I decided to have a paradigm shift and decided to let God change my narrative. So how do you change the narrative? Right, easier, easier said than done. How do you change the narrative? Well, thank you for asking. Uh, step one, right, and, and this is basic, what I do, and I think everybody can do it. Step one is you have to choose, right? You have to choose. Everybody's been blessed with a strong side and a weak side, right? Or, or God side and the devil side. Like the pastor Liz said, like Brother Leonard said, there's a decision in our mind tries to play tricks on us. And every day we have a choice whether we're gonna go to the strong side or the weak side. So the first thing we have to do is make a choice. And God gave us the power of choice. Amen. Right? Can I talk to somebody today? God literally has a plan for all of our lives, but gave us free will. Free will is what? The choice. Amen. The choice every day to whether we're going to chase the vision and the dream God gave us, or we're going to do the devil's work. We have a choice. 
So before you can change any narrative, the first thing you have to do is make a choice that I'm going to do the God's work. Right? I'm going to do the strong side. I'm going to, that little voice in your head that's talking, it's talking for a reason, right? And it's easy to ignore it, but when you ignore it, you listen to your weak side. Right? You're listening to your devil side. And believe it or not, God works, but the devil works too. Right? And my God works stronger, but we cannot lie and act like the devil doesn't exist in the devil anymore. Because he works. He works. So how, how do you choose? Right? How do you choose to work instead of selling drugs? How do you choose to squash beef instead of go shoot somebody? How do you choose to respect your body and not expose yourself on social media? How do you choose to do the right thing? I personally learned the easiest way to make a decision is to turn to God. Amen. Right? And it might sound cliche, but sometimes we get so anxious and we get to moving so much that we can't hear the voice of God. And what God says is, be still. Yeah, come on. And guess what? Be still. And if you can't be still, guess what he'll do? 14 months in jail, he'll, he'll make you be still. <laughs> right? So if you can't be still, God will sit you down. Yeah. So before you can choose, be still and listen to God so you can make sure you're doing the godly work and not the devil's work. Because guess who's out here in the earth? Yeah. He's running rapid. Come yeah. on. So after you choose what you want to do with your life, after you choose what you want to be with your life, and what you want to become with your life, the second thing that you have to do, the second thing that is crucial in order to change the narrative is to choose your relationship. Come on. Literally, who are you around? Yeah. Right? Because it's easy to say, oh, I want to be around this person, I want to be around that person. But if that person's doing wrong and you're around them, you're guilty by association. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Right? But if this person's doing right and you're around them, guess what? You're successful by association. Come on. Come on. And I, and I love it, right? Because once you choose your relationships, once you choose who you surround yourself with, once you choose who's on your team, all of a sudden God can choose to elevate you. Yeah. And I didn't understand it, right? But when I came home from jail, I was fortunate enough, I got boot camp, right? A six month program that grants you early release. So I got boot camp, and one of my friends from York was in jail with me. So every day for six months, me and him were talking back and forth. And he, he's been in jail before, so he's telling me everything you gotta do to stay out of jail, right? <laughs> so I'm, I'm taking notes, I'm writing down, because my first and last time in jail, I'm like, I'm not coming back. So I'm gonna listen to him. Little, little did I know, he had this plan in his head that he wasn't telling me. So we both come home, I'll say, what? And my wife's a testament, less than six months, my friend ended up back in jail, right? And me and his plan was to come home, and my wife said, oh, if you think you're gonna come home and sell drugs after 14 months, me and my daughter are out. <laughs> right? And, 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 and thank, thank you for clapping because it's a serious thing, but I chose that relationship over my friend's relationship, and guess what? My friend's back in jail, and I'm here being a dad and a husband. Right? Your relationship is dictating your success. And it's very important that you figure out who you want to be around. Because again, I try, listen, I try, I try to stick to the Bible. And Jesus, God literally tells us, He says, Behold, I will do a new thing, a new thing, a new relationship, new people. Why? Because when people hold you down, that means they're not for you. Right? If you're around people and they're not pushing you to your success, those aren't your friends. Right? And too often we got friends on social media that will share the negativity, that will be negative in our life, that won't help us and push us to our goals. And guess what? We still want to hang around. I don't get it. I don't get it. But then you have somebody that wants to be successful and push you to your goals and they're corny. Right? It's time for us to understand that we make cool. Right? It's cool to go to school. It's cool to get an education. It's cool to be somebody and be somebody in the army of the Lord. It's cool. You make cool. So it's important. It's important. It's important. First, you make the decision. I'm going to choose that I'm going to do the Lord's work. Then you make the decision. I'm going to surround myself with people that chose that same thing. Right? And then step three. What's step three? Somebody said, what's step three? What's step three? Step three, step three is you have to find your purpose. Yeah. Right? There's too many souls walking around that have no purpose in this world. They don't know what God put them here for. They don't have any goals. They don't have any dreams. And that's why it's easy to do the dumb things that they do. It's easy to take somebody's life when you don't value your own life. It's easy to go sell drugs when you don't value a dollar. It's easy to do the wrong thing when you don't know what God put you here for. Yeah. So you have to find your purpose. Yeah. And guess what? How do you find your purpose? Thank you guys for asking. How do you find your purpose? I found that everybody has a gift. Yeah. God blesses every single one of us with a gift. Yes. And what's your gift? What comes easy to you that's hard for somebody else? Yeah. Check this out. I, I recently found out like I'm a great dancer, right? And most people, they can't dance. Baby dance is my gift, right? But usually God gives everybody something that you can do that's hard for other people. Most people can't rap. Guess what? You got a gift. 
right? <laughs> Most of the time, we're too ignorant to be able to realize what God already blessed us with. It's already inside of us. Yeah. And until we get out our own way and allow God to work through us, that gift will never come out. Right. I promise you. Because let me ask you, I pose the question to you. What's the difference between the shooter in Penn Park and somebody owning a security company? Mm -hmm. What's the difference between a drug dealer and an entrepreneur running their own business? Mm -hmm. What's the difference between a stripper and a dance choreographer? The difference is the perception of how we see life. The difference is they're working for the wrong side. They're using their weak side and not their strong side. The difference is they're being led by the worldly thing and not the godly thing. Once you find your purpose, you know what you're going to do. The biggest thing that I've learned in my life, yes, it's important to choose who you want to be around and choose that you want to do the Lord's work. Yes, it's important to find your purpose, but I'm not going to lie to you. My brother was killed February 26, 2020, and that stuff was irrelevant, right? Real life does happen. It is important to realize that life happens. But the reason that you have to have a plan when life happens is because God is sending things at you to prepare you for what's to come. And be, every setback is something for a comeback. If I didn't lose my brother, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now, right? If I didn't squash that beef and be willing to say, I'm not gonna go try to find that person, I wouldn't do, be doing what I'm doing now. And what a lot of people don't realize is, for a long period of my time, for a long time in my life, I was losing, right? Like I went to York High and I graduated and I got a scholarship to go to Millersville and I lost my scholarship, right? That kind of started to lose it. Then I come back and just come back to the city and start selling drugs and go to jail and lose it, just continue. Then I got out of jail and I couldn't find a job like to lose it, just continue, right? And I didn't understand that God was losing. He was putting me through these things in order to shape me, in order to make me into who he needs me to be. Now I've met over 40 young men, stopping them from killing people, stopping them from not being able to fulfill their destiny. Why? Because God had to put me through that to get to what I had to go through. So I leave you with this as we stand to our feet. Life is about perspective. Yeah. And in order to change the narrative, your perspective on life has to be a positive one. And one story that I, I love to tell is, there's a story about a, uh, there's two old men, they both live in a nursing home. And one of the old men, I'm not sure if, if you guys have been in a nursing home, it's set up like a hospital where you walk in, there's one bed, you walk over, there's another bed. And there was two of them, and the one older man was by the door, and he always asked the, uh, the guy by the window, hey man, tell me what you see out there. Right, he can't get out of his bed. The nurse has to bathe him, has to feed him, everything. He can't say, hey man, what do you see out there? You look out the window, oh, man, I see grass, I see kids playing, I see a dog. So every day, the guy by the door would ask him, and every day the guy told him something beautiful, right? A rainbow, kids playing basketball, he told him something beautiful. And one day, my man by the window, his ticker stopped ticking, right? He ended up passing away. And that's not the moral of the story because we all have our date, right? But the guy by the door asked the nurse, he said, nurse, can you put me by the window? And the nurse couldn't, he said, why do you want to go by the window? You can't move anywhere. He said, can you put me by the window? Because I want to see what that guy was seeing. So the nurse put him over by the window, and he looks out the window, and all he sees is a brick wall. And he says to the nurse, nurse, this must be the wrong window, because my man told me about all the stuff that's out there. I, I see a wall. Somebody got to move this wall. And the nurse is like, who can, who can move the wall? Like, this old man lost his mind, right? And the nurse said, the guy said, no, he told me that it was beautiful things out there. And the nurse said, you didn't know. He said, I didn't know. He said, you didn't know, huh? And the guy said, I didn't know what? The nurse said, that man was born blind. In all his life, he could never see. But because of his perspective, every single day of his life, he was able to make somebody's life better. Amen. How are you going to allow God to use you to make your city better? Amen. At some point, we can't blame others. At some point, we can't point the finger at anybody else. Yes, things are going to happen, but like Pastor Liz said, I'm at the point in my life where I change the narrative and I'm the solution. Okay. And I'm willing to let God use me. Yeah. How can God use you? Everybody's not gonna have to be out in the field trying to save lives, but everybody does have a role to play to make your city the place that God destined for it to be. Amen. My name is Tavon Park, and I appreciate you guys. <laughs>